I buried the volume. I may have myself turned up too loud. That's okay. I'm just going to go with it. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. My name is Jimmy Putnam. I am your host. With me, as always, are my co-hosts, Joshua Vossler. Go, everybody. On mic number two and on microphone number three, Will Doherty. Hello. Ah! Oh. <laughs> God. I berated you for not talking over the intro, and now you're just, and now you're punishing me by just clamming up entirely. Correct. Okay. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, everybody. We have, we have so many awesome things to get to on today's show that we couldn't, and we, we couldn't edit any of it out because it was all too great. So we're actually breaking it into two parts and releasing it as two separate shows. That's not true. I'm going on vacation next week, and out of laziness, we're just releasing half of this show next week. So we are going to break uh, after a little while uh, and then release this as part one. And then one week from whenever you are listening to this, you can download part two of The Jimmy Curve featuring uh, our special guest, Annie Hildebrand, who we will get to in a minute. First, I need to address something that was brought to my attention by my good friend uh, Rachel and Rob Rand, who said they didn't want to buy the t-shirts that we have because I said on the show that they were crappy Vistaprint t-shirts. Not true! Those were different t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we now have good t-shirts uh, from a reputable company, and they are nice. So uh, if you would like to buy a t-shirt, we are selling them for $15. They are not the same t-shirts that I got free or like for two dollars with an order of business cards and announced these are terrible t-shirts no one will wear these so <laughs> no these are good t-shirts i can attest to that if, if you want the crappy t-shirts you can just have them uh, <laughs> so if you want a cool jimmy curve t-shirt let us know go ahead will you I, I was just going to see, like, if that offer of free crappy t-shirts is open to everyone at the table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can have them, but they will not fit you, probably, because they are size large? Yeah, you need to add three X's in front of that size, <laughs> ideally. So, we got a lot to do. Uh, on part one here, we are going to uh, hang out for a little while with our guest, Annie Hildebrand, and then we are going to play the note card game with a second special guest, Ryan Dowd, who will be joining us momentarily then in part two next week we're gonna have some news with joshua vossler and another uh edition of mary's trivia time a trivia game featuring my wife mary but right now let's get to our special guest this week she is the very funny the very friendly uh the very the very staring at me awkwardly <laughs> The very awkward Annie Hildebrand. Hello. Hey! I don't know what to do when you're introducing me. Just es waiting. Especially when I'm pausing uncomfortably <laughs> and just staring at you. Was that, does that make it weird? Yeah. It's like when you are at like an open micro show and people are trying, like saying your credits and welcoming you, you to the stage and you don't know how long they're going to talk. So you're kind of halfway walking up and pausing in the middle of the aisle that, to get what? on stage. Uh, I, ju I just had this conversation last night. When I was talking about hosts of a comedy show should not do time in between each comedian. And the reason I said that is because the thing about stand-up comedy, and Annie is a person who is about to start hosting a show. For me, I haven't been doing this long enough to where I'm just confident and I can just open up and, and let it fly whenever at the drop of a hat. Like, I have to kind of get myself worked up to perform. So when the comedian before me says... All right, I've just got one more thing. Like, I start my engine to warm it up. And then when I hear, well, that's it for me, folks. I've been whatever, Joshua Vossler. It's go time and I'm ready to go. If then the host starts doing a bit, I'm standing at the front of the stage awkwardly just getting more and more uncomfortable. Because I was already, I was like ready... Like, as I'm walking towards the stage, as the last comedian's walking off, I'm, like, I'm, in my mind, I'm going. Like, I'm already up there and I'm performing. And so I'm, like, gauging the audience and I've got my first line. But now i got to wait two minutes. It's like icing the kicker in football. Like, uh, Will, you know icing the kicker. You know that term. Right. John Icing is the kicker. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. For the, right. For the Cougars? <laughs> Probably, well, probably some Canadian. Will team. loves icing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So uh, I probably just really did a terrible job of introducing you. That's my point. 
Good job hosting, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right on. I appreciate all your hosting tips to help with my show. You are about to start hosting a new monthly comedy show. Yes. At the Pilgrimer. At the Pilgrimer. Which is like a like a coffee shop slash local art space. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to put it. Um, they're also like a nonprofit, and they just their big thing is supporting artists and creatives and makers in the city and just the city in general. So. I wish that just not making profit made you a non-profit, because we have no profit here. <laughs> <laughs> We're very much a non-profit yeah. organization. We should all get tax breaks for being comedians. <laughs> Tell us about your show. Um, well, Sorry, it, I, was sip, I was drinking coffee. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm so uncomfortable all the time. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a monthly show. Um and the first month we're doing an improv show with 88 Improv. They're a really incredible improv group. They are fantastic. And they're doing bringing back their epic improv, which is improv with also improvised scenery done by Tracy Mock, who's a really great improviser and cartoonist, and then also with music, the musician mm -hmm. TBD. But I have been browbeating Tim Schoenfeld <laughs> to let me be that musician. He Throw has, more resumes at him. He has not responded officially. <laughs> he is too nice to tell me no. <laughs> so every time I'm like, I, I started out being like, boy, sure would be great if I could be the musician part of Epic Improv. And he would go, yeah, it would be great. And then that would be the end of it. And now it's 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 evolved into me saying, let me do it. Please. And he's like, I'll have to talk with everyone else. <laughs> so uh, hopefully eventually I, I would love to be a part of that show because Epic Improv is probably my favorite comedy show I've seen in Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, it was spectacularly great when I saw when the last time they did it. Yeah. So cool. They're great. And then uh, that will be the first one. And then it will alternate, alternate between that. And then a stand-up show that is, um, it's based off of a show that I was on in Chicago that is called The Late Late Breakfast. It's a great show. But basically everybody does a stand-up set, but there's a challenge that they have to incorporate into their set. So I tried it at an open mic. My favorite one was actually Ryan Dowd's. It was uh, late night, and he had to do the first two and a half minutes of his set as like a monologue, and the second two and a half minutes of his set grabbing someone from the audience and interviewing them. Uh, Ryan Dowd will be joining us later in today's show. Right now, Ryan Dowd is sitting on my couch scowling and shaking his head because he <laughs> unhappy with that. Uh, no, that I, I was at that open mic. I did terribly, but I thought the show was awesome I, I thought it was a fun idea i thought everyone did great yeah i <laughs> yeah. that's a lie yeah, but i think everyone, <laughs> i still had a good time and i think almost everyone had a good time that's what matters uh cool so look forward to that when's the first was the first show march 7th it is a saturday and the time will probably be eight o'clock that and that's the epic improv yes people you don't want to miss epic improv if you didn't see it last time uh, you are less of a person for it. So don't make that same mistake. Come see Epic Improv at the Pilgrimer on March 7th. It'll be great. And we're also working on getting a improv workshop going on there about Fantastic. once or twice a month, like uh, two or three hours on like a Saturday or Sunday. Improv in Lincoln? Whoa. Fantastic. Whoa. Uh, I should mention Annie and I are on an improv team together yeah. called Words with Friends with Benefits. You can also Granted, catch us. me and Jimmy are not friends and we've never had any benefits, so it... It's all a lie. I, I'm not even very good at words. <laughs> so that is true. Uh, but uh, you can come see us pretend to do some of those things. Uh, the third Thursday of every month at the Backline Improv Theater. I thought our last show went well. Yeah, you did good. I, uh, we As a team, it was fine. Let me restate that. I thought I did good <laughs> at the last show. <laughs> you know what? That's the thing that sucks about team improv is... I, I do that all the time. Like, the show can be great. We can get huge laughs. But, like, I don't get any laughs. And I'm like, we sucked. <laughs> like, I hated it. I, it's hard. It, ah, improv is tough. Man. I don't remember any of that show. I just remember I died. And the person <laughs> who killed me, like, punched me hard when they were pretending to stab me. Yeah, Lindsay punched you she real. Did. We can say her name. Lindsay, Lindsay Theus. Yeah. She hit you real hard. She. I don't think she knows her own strength. I also think that she was She's probably subconsciously yeah. telling me how Poorly, I was doing. She's tiny but mighty. <laughs> That's true. Uh, cool. Uh, I like. I like to see. 
I I'm I do a lot of stand up and I've had very limited like interaction with improv. But if you told me that like one of the key points of improv was that when like improv part or team members thought other ones were not doing well, they use it as an opportunity to inflict physical violence <laughs> on one another. I would go to a lot of improv. Yeah, how how can we turn this into a stand up thing? I that, would actually, that, yeah. that, if that were allowed, I would do more improv. Because, uh, <laughs> I've wanted that to happen a lot of times. So, uh. We can incorporate that in the stand It was a terrible yeah. idea for me to have a cup of coffee sitting next to me. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, Annie, you uh, wanted to comment on something that was talked about on a previous episode of The Jimmy Curve. Should we do yes. that now? Yeah, I've been biding my time until I'm on the show so I can talk to Will about this. B biding Ooh. your time, twiddling your fingers, Mr. Burns style, mm -hmm. uh, preparing for this. Okay, so this this is a little exchange we had. Uh, on the show with Abby Rosenquist, which took place, I don't know, a couple months ago, before she moved to Austin. Now I'm sad. Uh, but let's play the clip, and we'll see what we said. I, I mean, Annie Hildebrand, like, no one's going to see her on a show and say, yeah, she doesn't, she's just a chick on the show. Like, no, yeah. I'm not going to say that. Like, she's genuinely funny. Uh, yep. Uh, I, I, I want to say, I'm, I'm absolutely not saying Annie Hildebrand isn't funny. Annie, Annie is funny, but there are obviously people who would say that oh, yeah, because yeah. I hear people saying that. Will, who said that? I mean, <laughs> I don't even know who doesn't think I'm funny. <laughs> Me and James put bets on who we think it is. Oh. I, I, I am very sorry to disappoint you, but I don't know specifically... Uh, I don't have a specific person because it wasn't about you, and that was the point I was trying to make. It was just that, no, people say shitty things about women on shows all the time. That's the point I was trying to get at. Don't say that people have said I'm not funny and then not be able to tell me who it was. <laughs> well, you said you've heard people say that. Let me let me let me let me ask <laughs> let me ask what I a different question and maybe take this a different direction. Uh did you think that there was nobody who would ever say you weren't funny? Because <laughs> I'm they, because so they're likable and they're, awkward. No, I'm kidding. Because there are people who will say that about all of us. Right. Well, I've always I think everyone who's a comedian, there are certain people that they meet and then they're like, I'm pretty sure that person doesn't think that I'm funny. Like they don't really put me on shows. We don't really talk mm -hmm. that much. And so there have been. I mean, you there that always happens where you're like, uh, I don't know if that person likes me, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of life is people are gonna not like you or think you're annoying or think you're. A jerk or a bitch. Would, would it be weird if I, I told you? Who. Would it be weird if I told you it was James Lindsay? That's <laughs> probably <laughs> right. Uh, I, I I have heard comedians say things about other comedians like in a moment of jealousy or anger or frustration, and not really mean it. Like I've I've said that myself about people, and I'm like I don't I don't really mean that. Like I mean I'm just gonna pull a name out here and use it. And, and throw someone under the bus, but like there's a guy, a local comedian named Cameron Logsdon, who is lo primarily an impressionist, and like fucking people love that shit. And I I saw him go like after only doing comedy for a couple of months, I saw him just crush at a big room, and I was like fucking impressionist, that's bullshit, it's so <laughs> lazy, like I hate that, it's not funny. But what I was really thinking was. If I could do that, I would, but I can't, and that makes me angry. <laughs> like, because he's really good at it. Uh, so, I mean, I hear like that could be what has happened, where people have uh, seen you do well or get an opportunity that maybe they thought they should get or whatever, and they're like, "Dad, she's not funny. What makes her so great?" But like, I don't mean it. Or maybe they did. I don't know. Like Thanks for sugarcoating it so I can keep pretending that everybody likes me now, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I want to say, like... I, I have never heard anybody be like, Annie's a bitch. Oh, so, like, that... I mean, I've never heard that. Matter. No. I And I don't... I've heard that about Will. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I, Everyone I mean, in this room has said that about Will. <laughs> yeah. I mean... 
as as long as uh, as long as we're all talking about Will, then Will's gonna <laughs> join in and talking about Will in the third person. Uh, Will Will finds Will to be a remarkably easy person to hate. Uh, but I, I mean, when I when I said that uh, on the show, like uh, the, uh, like the clip that you played it, mm-hmm. as it relates to you, I wasn't even talking. And maybe maybe I missed the point of the conversation. But like, I wasn't talking about like other comedians even really. Like I was talking about like I hear like audience members every once in a while have like some shitty comment about like women comedians and oh, i'm like i encounter yeah. i just like For encounter sure. that well, all the time well somebody yelled that at you from the bar the last time we were at dugan's no they didn't say that i wasn't funny they said oh. you fucked everyone in this bar oh right oh, God, i was such a douchebag which bag. wasn't <laughs> even was the I dumbest was, ugh, ugh. <sighs> i was talking about the opposite of that but right. whatever yeah, you were talking about being talking about being an awkward person. Talking about how I didn't cuddle till I was twenty three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> and then some and some guy at the bar was like, "Did she say she's gonna fuck everyone in this bar?" And like, I th- I think your boyfriend actually was like, "No," <laughs> like, he didn't really say much. But he was more pissed about that than me. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. it was like, I'm a strong person. Pissed. Stop. Yeah. And I could be like, Ugh. I felt really independent. It was great. Do you have a lot of situations where you're like, uh, uh, being a woman in comedy is hard and uh, there are people giving me shit and uh, do you have a lot of that? Um, no. I mean, I feel like a lot of it at like this guys point are yelling I'm stuff at me to... that they wouldn't yell at any, you know, other comedians or. I don't think it happens as much with me. I don't know if it's because I'm extremely tall and they're afraid of me which is what i hope <laughs> but you I'm, are very tall i am i'm taller than everyone here i don't think you're taller than josh we're both six two right yeah we're, okay. six two. we're equal we're twins mm-hmm. um but i feel like a lot of it is more after the fact i think of stuff and i'm like wow that is really shitty like the way that you treat mm-hmm. women kind right. of yeah and a lot of it i mean i'm just i'm very optimistic about things so i think that everyone's a good person and then after the fact i'm like oh (laughs) that's what you were doing there i I don't think it helps either being in a bar where typically guys aren't the greatest women in general in bars you know what i mean like they're just that's kind of what it's about yeah you know what i mean so there's something about it there's something uh, they're either trying to get laid or they're trying to make you know talk shit about you know, women, or if they're with guys, talk about the women in the bar yeah. or whatever. Right. My favorite is when, like, dudes that still, like, think, if I put this girl down, she's going to want to fuck me. <laughs> is, no. Yeah, is just that, some, like, nagging. Is, Don't they call that nagging? But it's, like, too extreme. Uh, it's not like. Is that a real conscious thought that people have? I don't or is know, it just a, yeah, a function of a low name. self-esteem? I mean, yeah, yeah he just said nagging. It has a name. People do right. it on purpose. For right. Sure. But, but I was always, I, I always see stuff like that. And I'm like, that's such a dumb idea. Like, is it, is that a real thing that actually works a large enough percentage of the time to make it worth doing? Or is that just a name that people have given to idiocy coming out of a person's mouth? Do you There's, know what I mean? It, it's like a thing called like pickup artist that like return of kings is really big on or you know like mm-hmm. the people who the, this is how you score women and that's part of it like make them understand that, you, they're, <laughs> that you're better than them i don't even remember i get mad, i get really angry when i read the site i've made myself stop yeah, but, see, like I, I can't like look at yeah. it i think there's a certain way to do it and it's like stand-up comedy it's not for everyone like it's everybody <laughs> thinks they can do like nagging but it turns into just an insult. Well, you know nobody I mean? should be doing that to, like, try to disarm a person. You know what like... I'm saying, though? It's like, <laughs> it's like there's kind of a cute way to do it, probably, you know? Not Ugh. like, hey, your butt looks fat. Like, that'd be bad. But, like, something like but about... But the whole goal of it is to try to make people feel bad about themselves so their confidence is, like, down. So and vulnerable. so they try to, like, re- gain back their confidence by, like, winning this guy over, which is a shitty mm-hmm. thing. I mean, it's... I don't, it's manipulative. You're like, ma- no matter how you do it. You're trying to make people feel vulnerable to take advantage of them. Okay. Right? Never mind. That's shitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's how I got you to be on this podcast. <laughs> I just negged you, and then, like, and then if you want to come co host or whatever, like build some of your confidence back. Uh,. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in fairness, in fairness, the closest thing I can describe is like 
that I've been able to do as successfully nagging as my life is when I just just spend a lot of time feeling really terrible about myself and then go jerk off, <laughs> which I feel like is kind of the same type of problem. Like, I just need to make myself feel real bad and then I'll be willing to do it. I'm shaking my head like I know what you're talking about, but I just want this to end. <laughs> I, just, I just want this to stop. <laughs> Uh, Are, I, now, I, do you, or I, was, were you just negging me? No, I was just <laughs> negging you. I think the idea of negging a female comedian is hilarious. Like, you're not funny. Have sex with me. Like, that's, <laughs> that's uh, terrible. That's the worst. Uh, Annie, you are another minority. You are our second Christian oh, comedian yes. guest on this show. I am. After Chris Dryden. Uh Chris Dryden refused to answer any of our esoteric questions, claiming that he would just be raptured. So, uh, yeah, uh, Will, did you want to, did you have things you wanted to talk about, about that? Or did you just want me to bring it up and see what happens? I mean, it, it's, it, it's really interesting to me, um, just because it, it's a weird, it makes you like a very small, like being a woman in a comedy community is already a minority. Oh, and being like a conservative Christian woman within the comedy community is a minority within a minority within a minority. So it's like, I assume you're the only one. Or, or is there another one? Like There might be. None of, <laughs> none of my female friends that are comedians are. I mean, I think a lot of people didn't, because Abby is, well, you know, we started stand-up around the same time. She was on the show. She's really funny. But a lot of, I mean, she was raised Catholic and she's not um, religious at all now. So she had a lot of jokes making fun of that. So everyone was surprised, like, you guys are friends. You don't talk about very... it a lot. No, because I'm afraid of conflict, and I know I'm a minority. <laughs> so I'm like, keep your mouth shut so they don't beat you up. Mm -hmm. I know that's not going to happen, but still, I'm like, oh, I want to have friends. So, well, and, and, and also, think... I'm not super judgmental about it, so I don't really well, care. Well, I, I I find that religion sometimes, like I I have very good friends who are very religious, and it never comes up. You're one, Tim Schoenfeld that we just mentioned in '88 Improv is another one. Like I. He's an awesome guy. It just doesn't come up that much. It's not that big of a deal. I find the why it, the reason it has such a negative connotation for a lot of people is that sometimes religion acts as a negative as a megaphone for the other negative shit inside of a person. A lot of the time, like yeah. a lot of the just like sometimes people get called like people make fun of someone for being a Christian, but really that person is just an asshole, and the <laughs> asshole is coming out through their Christianity. But just it's, right, you know, yeah. because. Anytime you have, anytime you have like a life defining stance on a thing, it, Christian is the same thing as Democrat. Like if you're just an asshole, then it's going to come out through your democratic hate speech or whatever, whatever it is you've got, like whatever strong, you know, like nah, nah, those are just the two politics. And religion. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was funny cause I was at Christmas and my mom was there. And I was like, man, we should play some Christmas music. And she's like, oh, if you still even like Christmas music. And I go. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did that come from? Didn't think much of it. And then I was at her house uh, a few weeks ago, and she heard the Chris Dryden episode, and she heard Jimmy say, well, we're all atheists, <laughs> which I'm not, but I didn't say anything, but I'm not an atheist, but my mom thought I was an atheist because he said, well, we're all atheists. Oh, I thought you were. No, I'm not atheist. <laughs> but uh, What are you? My mom was like. Don't I, make him say that. I, His I'm mom's a, listening. I'm like more agnostic. <laughs> I believe in a God, but I don't claim to know what it is. Mm, that's just atheism. No, it's not. Yeah. That's, it's Jimmy, that's just pushing your beliefs on other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, I, I find that agnostic is like, I don't want to talk about it, is really what you're saying. Did I think that a no. lot of the country is agnostic if they don't yeah. want to talk about it? Right, right. Uh, <laughs> this is going to cause problems. Atheist is, is being like, God does not exist. That's claiming to know if God exists or if he doesn't it's, and you believe it's, he doesn't. It's, it's, it's actually not. Like one of the biggest um, misconceptions about atheism by people who are not atheists is the belief that people think that atheism is the belief that there is no God, which it's not. Atheism is living a life where the existence of God never comes up. Like you don't have to have a stance on it or a take on it because it's like saying – it, it'd be like saying, like, what's your take on whether or not humans can teleport? You'd be like, you don't believe that they can't. It just never, it never comes up for you. It's not a part of your decision-making process. That's what atheism is. 
it's not the belief that there's no God. It's just that there's no God. I don't get it, but I'm uh, <laughs> but I'm the dumb one on the show. It's the reason that atheism is not a religion is because it's not belief based. Right. The well, definition of atheism is the disbelief or lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. Correct. So the lack of belief. Not the belief that there is no God, but the lack of belief in a God. Those are two totally, so totally different things. Words are powerful. Those are totally different things because the belief that there's no God is the acceptance that there might be a God. You're making decisions based on that there might be a God, but you believe there's not one. You're so accepting of, it as a possibility. Kind of like a binary thing. It's either one or the other where you're more like, it's not, ah, that might be a bad It's metaphor. just It's just that it never comes up. It's like, yeah. do mermaids exist? Like, we, we don't really consider that a part of, like, the world. We don't believe that there's no such thing as mermaids. We're not mermaid skeptics. Like, they just, it just doesn't, matter it is not a part of our reasoning and when people talk about believing in mermaids it just seems dumb you're just like why are you talking about that like why don't we talk about reality that's how religion seems to atheists by that example though like anything that you inherently think like i i, I don't remember the statistics right now but like do that say that example you just said but with ghosts it's like same thing right except that like very close to, if not more than half of this country believes in ghosts. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so I'm, dumb. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you can't just, like, something that there's no out overt evidence of isn't the same thing as, like... But I'm not a ghost skeptic. Like, who's just not ghosts. Like, I don't... I, <laughs> it's, 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 it's silly to talk about. I don't really... I, I never think about it. I don't encounter things and think like oh there might be ghosts here and nah, i don't believe in ghosts like i, I never even think of it because like there's no ghosts like so it's the same thing extremely strong in your belief it's and, not a belief i know you don't <laughs> but i mean from from what i'm hearing it's not i don't it just sounds more like i'm so sure of this it doesn't matter yeah, but you're saying I it mean, because it's not based in reality, it's not something you think about. I'm saying it's not based. It doesn't have to do with reality. That was a, a I misspoke. It's more that it's not based in logic or reason. Like it's it's based in belief and faith and acceptance of things you can't prove. And like I don't really have any. Like I don't. I don't like that. I feel like this conversation is way too civil. Can I just go back? <laughs> Can I just go back to attacking Christianity? Yeah, we ended up attacking my atheism, didn't we? <laughs> that is, I'm actually totally comfortable. That's with not. That. That's not. <laughs> well, no. You you said something earlier that I think uh, was a was a totally valid point, which is like, if a person's an asshole, whatever they believe in, they'll just be an asshole through that. Right. Yeah. Which I think is totally true. But I feel like the difference when you're an asshole through religion. Is that being an like being an asshole about your religion, if you believe in your religion, is the rational response to believing in your religion. Like, I I, I feel like if you have that like a true belief in a in a god or a like Christianity, like always going on about Christianity is the rational response to that belief. Like you would want to make sure everybody knew about it. You'd make sure everyone was basing all of their decisions about it, as should you. And I feel like, and here, here's what I'm, here's how I'm going to attack your religion. <laughs> I'm going to say, I don't like the fact that you don't behave in that way means to, in my mind, that you're not making the rational response to your religious belief, which leads me to believe that you don't believe your religious belief. Well, you think that because she doesn't proselytize? I mean, I, I feel like, like, being like if you believe that any of your actions have an eternal consequence then it should be the only thing in your life like that's the reasonable reasoned response to religion like do you, do you, do you understand like, like if, a religious, if a religious person thinks that i'm going to hell and doesn't try to save me they're kind of an asshole is that what you're saying? I mean, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a... a I don't believe that, but I get what you're saying. B but I mean, from the perspective of a religious person, why wouldn't that be true? I guess, for me, I feel like that is a very specific way to practice your religion, is being very... Talking about it a lot and trying to get other people to convert or anything. And... Mm -hmm. I guess, for, like, for me, religion is a lot more of a personal thing, like talking to other people like if you want people to be christian 
the worst way to get them to do that <laughs> is talking about it all the time and telling them about it. Like, I think there are people who, if they want to be, like, I don't know. I For me, if they want to learn about it, then I am fine with talking to them about it and teaching them. But if they don't, it's not going to work anyway. Like me just like pounding my beliefs on someone isn't going to do anything. Sure. It eventually works the opposite where you turn them off. Right. Yeah. And I think that that is way worse. Making somebody hate the idea of Christianity. I think that's worse than not doing anything and just waiting for them to come around. Maybe I mean, that might be a cop out. I mean, I. No, I think it's an acceptable answer. <laughs> 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 Case closed. Do you have a response? Um, I feel I I feel like you never want to stop talking about this. Oh, no, it's it's because, super interesting to because me. I kind of don't either. Like I, I I I it didn't occur to me that asking Annie about Christianity would re- really just result in me yapping on about atheism for <laughs> twenty minutes because like I can talk about atheism a lot for a long time, but it's it has the same effect. Like you can watch people's eyes start to drop close. Like ah, he's, here he goes again talking about it, the difference between two things that sound the same to me. <laughs> like you know, I, I get that, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, well, and and I understand that. Like what, what you're interpreting as oh, maybe she's not really religious. Like I'm just saying, like well, no, it's, she's just not an asshole. Like yeah, right. <laughs> She don't want. She doesn't want to be the bad car but salesman of Christianity. Because yeah, a lot of people have put a really bad name on Christianity by doing shitty things, whether it's being a dick or like killing a bunch of people. Well, so, what, so, that's the, the same is true with everything. People right. put a really bad name on being a Republican, right? And because so, they're they're a bunch of assholes who are just assholes, and then they but they shout Republican at the end of their diatribe, and so everyone's like, "Well, Republicans suck." Yeah, but they're, it doesn't mean they're all bad. Yeah, I don't know. And a big part of, like, religion is kind of, like, living by example and, uh, like, living, uh, and I, I know whenever anyone, bring, like, even says Jesus, people are like, ugh. But, like, living in a way similar to, like, how Jesus would live, being a good person, mm-hmm. caring about right. other people. And so that's what I want to do. In fairness, I feel like I'm the person here who's closest on the path to living the way Jesus would live. <laughs> <laughs> By which right. I mean I'm on track to die at age 33. Right. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> right. And probably crucified. Surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by prostitutes. And, and oddly Romans. And, right, <laughs> tax collectors <laughs> trying to get their money. All right. No, I, yeah, it's, uh, go ahead. Well, I, I know it's just, you know, even without, with, without the aspect of like being an asshole, it's just I. It, it, it's because like I was raised. It wasn't just Christian. It was Catholic, mm-hmm. and like Catholic has a very absolute or a very like moral absolutist bent to it. Like they they specifically say Catholic teaching: if you don't believe one thing about the Catholic dogma, <laughs> you don't get to be Catholic <laughs> anymore. I really like this. <laughs> Preach. Um, <laughs> So what I'm saying, people, <laughs> as you walk by living your lives, you think, you think you believe, but do you? Because if your belief has an eternal consequence, then an eternal consequence means that that should be the only thing that you can have in your life. Well, <laughs> makes you sad. Uh, please donate to the donation jar on your way out of... The one, Jimmy Curve. <laughs> one of my goals for this episode was for me to sing that before you actually dropped it. Because oh. I do that in normal conversation all the time. Most, <laughs> mostly with James because he listens to it. Too, but I just, <laughs> well, Dodie, <laughs> you sad. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Does that, come up, does that come up a lot in your daily conversations? <laughs> that's when anyone's sad. We're like, let's talk about Will now. <laughs> Sadness does remind me of Will as well. <laughs> that's true. It happens. All right, let's, uh, let's... I could. I, I also did want to spend a little time attacking you for being a Republican, but I guess we can... <laughs> well, later, I guess. <laughs> oh, you know what? I had one more thing that I wanted to bring up really quick. and Because uh, sure. uh, a lot of your stand-up is about just being an, an awkward person. You tell a lot of jokes about it. And I feel like I am a very socially awkward person a lot of times as well. And I had a socially awkward encounter that involved you the other day. So I'm going to tell the story. And this is this is one of those things where, like, a very small, like, nothing thing happened. 
But I stayed up all night thinking about it. <laughs> so this was, I believe, Friday night. Uh, you were in Dinner Detective. And you and James were coming by. James, your boyfriend, were coming by here when you when you got back from Dinner Detective, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of us were here hanging out. I sent a message because we were running low on beer. I sent a message that said, hey, if you stop and get beer on the way, I'll give you cash when you get here. I did not get a response. But when you got here, James had a (laughs) sun-kissed box with cans of Bud Light in it. (laughs) And I was like, does he expect me to give him money? Like, what? But, like, I know. and, And so I didn't really say anything. But, like, I'm just the kind of person who's like, Okay, he didn't, I, I think he just got, I think he just brought beer from home <laughs> and he left some of it here and he, but he didn't ask me what I wanted at the store and I don't think he stopped, but why would he have done that? And it just really, like it confused me and I was like, is he, does he think we've entered into some kind of verbal contract where we, where he's going to, if he, if he can exchange, you know, product for cash or like what's going on, but probably no thought went into that. No, that's so, I mean, I do that too, but yeah, no, he, we didn't want to stop for booze because mm-hmm. I was tired. I fell asleep like 20 minutes after coming over here. Yeah. Um, and he's had beer that he's like, I never drink it. Let's just bring that. And so he got rid of his beer. See, the, like this is this, I feel like this is everything in my life. People just kind of like, don't put any thought into a thing. and just like, ah, whatever. No one cares. And then I'm like, what? This means something. And I panic and I'm like, do it. Am I supposed to? I don't know how to act. <laughs> and it really, it really confuses me. So I just want to tell that story. There was one time <laughs> I had just gotten back from like studying abroad or something over the summer. And I saw one of my really close guy. We were just friends and we went to dinner to like catch up. And the waitress was like, do you want separate checks? And I, she mumbled. I thought she said summer checks. And I was like, hmm. And I just looked at him. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I shrugged my shoulders because I was like, I don't know. But, and then he's like, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, because originally he's like, we can go to dinner and we can watch Iron Man, which sounds like it, it really wasn't a date. Neither of us ever had feelings right. for each other. But then afterwards, he's like, I got a lot of stuff to do. So maybe we'll just like not watch the movie and in my head i'm like oh my gosh he thinks that like i was setting this up as a date like i wore a dress because it was summer and i hadn't worn a dress and just even still like i've never talked to him about it but i'm just like oh no right he thought like, i was trying to play my moves i did i didn't have an emotional investment in this situation until i convinced myself that i might have made a mistake <laughs> like that's what i do is like i i didn't care about the outcome but i might have screwed something up so yeah all right well that's in fairness, uh, I, I do a very similar thing, uh, often with Jimmy, except that it works in the exact reverse, where uh, I'm just, like, standing around with, like, like Homer Simpson, just, like, playing a monkey, playing the cymbals in my forehead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, Jimmy's real mad about something. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim- Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure whether or not that's better mm. or worse. Yeah, it's just, it's just how I am, man. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're a stand-in for most of the people in my life. That? <laughs> it's all I ever wanted to be. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's bring in Ryan Dowd and play the note card game. What do you say? Yeah. All right. Joining us on the show now, uh, and the first repeat guest in the Jimmy Curve podcast history, my friend Ryan Dowd. Yay. It's a bad decision. Yay. Yay. I don't uh, I don't want to immediately take something away from Ryan Dowd, but we have had old uh, Mr. Controversy himself on a couple times. You? No, Corey, Corey Brewer. <laughs> uh, Corey has only been a guest on the show once, and then clips of Corey have been played. Didn't he call on in? Other someone? shows. No. Oh. No. Uh, Corey has oh. only been live on the show in studio one time. We had, yeah, we did the second uh, edition of uh, Corey Brewer's Defends His Facebook posts, I guess. Right, right. But it was not live. We don't need to have this conversation, do we? Well, Ryan is most fam- <laughs> Ryan is most famous in these parts for this. I'm really white. So, uh, <laughs> right. any updates on that? Uh, I still am. <laughs> <laughs> If anything, more so. <laughs> okay, so uh, Ryan is going to join us now along with... And Annie, you're still here, I should say. Yeah, so I'm it's not confusing. Here. I made it. All right. Uh, we're going to play the note card game. We've tried this once before with Bob Gurnett. It was a lot of fun. 
Uh, the way the game works is one person will be asked a question by the person to their left. Uh, we will all write down what that person's what we think that person's response will be on a note card. Uh, and then we will reveal our answers. They will reveal their answer and we will see who is the closest. And there will probably be a lot of weird things said and read. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, anyways, there's a drop. It's the note card game. Okay. So I am going to start by asking a question to Ryan on my right. Uh, I have not prepared any questions. Uh, normally... I always start out with, in a post-apocalyptic war-ravaged society, what would be your place? Uh, but I think I know the answer to that, so I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you, Ryan, what is, okay, you can only have one food for the rest of your life. What food is it and why? It's the only food you can eat for the rest of your life. And it can be a combination food such as a uh, pie or a sandwich. Uh, but but it's the only thing you can eat for the rest of your life. What is it and why? Okay. Can I can I ask for clarification on this hypothetical? Yes. Um, for the one food, do is it one food purely for the enjoyment of eating, or is there any concern of actually maintaining health by only eating one food? That is up to Ryan. Oh, so we have to determine how whether he would put that into the thought determining his answer. Correct. Will just confused me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it, 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 the more confused you are, the more fun this will be. So we all write down what we think Ryan is going to say. And Ryan, you write down your answer as well. Okay. And I will now. Okay. Everybody has their answers in. I will reveal what I suspect Ryan will answer to this question. For he can only eat one food for the rest of his life. What food is it? I wrote a bland, nutritious, life-sustaining gruel, but only barely life-sustaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like Soylent. I was thinking like the shit from the Matrix. Okay. But uh that's my answer. Life sustaining gruel. Josh. Yeah, I put Soylent Green. <laughs> 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 All right. That's pretty close. Well, is it wait, is it delicious? It's made of people, but they never said if it was good tasting or not. People seem to like it. It takes all forms. Like it tastes like food. Okay. So I, I would say Soylent Green. Yeah. Will? Uh, my answer was the word sandwich in finger quotes <laughs> because Ryan is a pedantic ass uh, and sandwich can mean almost anything. So he would just like use that as his way to like scam the system and be like, Ryan, you're eating a slice of pizza. It's like pizza is just an open faced Italian sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan is not actually trying to uh, sustain his life. He is trying to win the game in your version of his answer. Correct. Right. Okay. Or really just embarrass the ask. Okay, good. Annie, what do you got? Um, I hope I worded this right. I put a microwave cheese sandwich because infinite sadness lasts longer than being full. <laughs> <laughs> you referenced one of Ryan's actual bits. I did. I'm Very sucking good. up to the person who gives us points. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alright, Ryan, what do you um, got? Mine was actually, I wrote the word pussy and then uh, <laughs> put a line through it. <laughs> And then I said cream cheese and jalapeno pizza because I used to love to eat that all the time and I can't anymore. <laughs> Why can you not anymore? Oh, I actually have high cholesterol, which is weird. <laughs> if you and I stood next together, next to each other, and we asked a thousand people which one of us has high cholesterol, a thousand people would pick me. Yeah. No, but I'm a, uh, what's it called? A toffee? It's a thin on the. Is that like a gay thing? Or thin, yeah. It's a thin on the outside, <laughs> oh, fat on the I've heard, inside. I've heard of this. Because uh, it made me have a brief moment of hope, which is basically like I read about this study that basically said like, no, just being uh, being sedentary is way more harmful than actually just being fat if you're kind of active. Right. So it was like, yeah, just like super skinny people who just don't do anything or it, as unhealthy. That'd it's be funny, like, I because I, I look terrible, but I actually have really low cholesterol and like my blood pressure is really low and like internally I quite fit i'm just a fat slob on the outside so i first wrote lentils because you look like a guy that eats lentils i have like, lentils <laughs> at my house if you would have put that i would have given you but i have to give it to annie for like right. she sucked up to me for a point annie gets nice <laughs> always wins uh now, i want that to be my drop jimmy okay 
Team Nice always wins. Yep. Can do. <laughs> the problem is I'll never have an opportunity to play nice that because we don't have any other nice people on the show. Your wife's pissed. Oh, very, very. Oh, very, very. <laughs> you can't claim to be nice while threatening me. <laughs> okay, yes, you can. <laughs> we'll get to your segment in a minute. Uh, which direction should we go? You, you got a question? Do I have a question? No, I, or Ryan, Ryan just answered one. Maybe now he asks one. You want me to? I don't care. <laughs> Josh, ask me a question. If if you were elected president tomorrow, what would be the first thing you do on your first day in office? Oh, great one. Excellent. I got it. Uh, we all good. good? Everybody got an answer? All right, Josh, what'd you, what do you got? What'd you write for me? Your first day in office, you would outlaw Zydeco music. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm not worried about that constituency. Uh, Will? Uh, I said, uh, get a beager in the Oval Office and not get caught for Christ's sake. (laughs) 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 I'll just bump the mic stand. All right. Uh, my my wife oh. didn't freak out on that one. <laughs> like, when I called her, when I when I when I hinted that she might not be nice, total chaos. <laughs> Uh, illicit blowjob in the Oval Office, no reaction. She just doesn't believe that that's possible. But right. <laughs> um, I put, declare the national dress code to be cargo shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Punishment will be given to those who don't abide by this in the summer. Mm. <laughs> that's good. I have a draw and quarter Will Doherty for sedition on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wrote... I would reincarcerate all the people my predecessor just pardoned. <laughs> <laughs> it really bothers me when, like, every president on their last day, like, pardons a bunch of people. I'm like, it makes no sense to me why they do that. But, uh, oh, man. What was yours, Josh? Yo, Outlaw Zydeco music. I like that. Uh... I think I'm giving Annie the point again. I like the cargo Dang. shorts thing. Uh, <laughs> because, like... Sweeping it. It, it. Only only to prevent people from having to wear suits to outdoor weddings in July. That is a crime. Like, I would... I need... That needs to be stopped. Like, that is that is ridiculous. All right. Uh, Will, you got a question for uh, Joshua? No. I hadn't really thought ahead on this. <laughs> <laughs> And through the magic of podcasting, I will pause the recording until you think of one. Okay. Time passes. And through the magic of audio editing, we're back. Okay, so this is the question. Do you have an arch enemy? Ooh, I like that. We, and we if, and ex- who would they? Yeah, expound on this. Yeah, and who right. would they be? Right, okay. And Perfect. why? Perfect. Okay, everybody's got their answers in. Does Josh have an arch enemy? Who is it and why? Uh, Will, what do you got? I'm pretty confident in this one. I got this answer down to one word. Carbs. (laughs) (laughs) I considered that. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) I went a different direction because I was like, everybody's going to say carbs. Uh, Annie. No. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Okay. I had uh, the post office because they keep giving him junk mail and are part of the government. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I said uh, the grandfather of modern math- modern mathematics, Pythagoras. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I do. Jo- hate- Josh is in school, and I hear him complain about math. A I lot. do hate math. <laughs> I do hate mm. all those things. Yeah, but the Pythagorean <laughs> theorem is like fifth grade. <laughs> Yeah, they, I, <laughs> all right. Can I change my answer to Will? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uh, my actual answer is Oliver Reese. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's mean. Uh, hey, listen. I am. I've been upfront with Oliver, and he's. I wouldn't say he's an. I don't. I don't. Okay. I wouldn't say we're enemies. I feel. He brings. He brought a joke book, one thousand and one jokes, and that's the kind of person. Uh, he is Oliver. Anyway. Oliver is a, a very, very new comedian who's been showing up to local open mics for people who don't know. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you use finger quotes when you said comedian? Uh, uh, that's my answer. I would not like to talk about it any further. <laughs> 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 who wins the point? Oh my gosh. Um. 
I'm going to have to go with the post office. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I don't like calling out other people and making fun of them uh, on this show, but I'm leaving that in. Annie, do you have a... (laughs) You have a question for Will? Yeah. Um, a lot of my old really good questions got are on different phones, so I'm not dealing with, you know, my best ones. Do you have two phones? Uh, I had a phone that the screen ah, cracked. And I old phone. That. Yeah. Right. So this one that I'm going to do is, what is the most bullshit thing you've had on your resume? Oh, okay. For William. All right. Okay. Everybody's got their answers in. Uh my wife, Mary, is adding on to my... Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, on to my answer. Uh, Annie, what do you got? Uh, grease stain. <laughs> <laughs> Mary just wrote coffee stain next to mine. Like, that, that's funny. Good? Has a good sense of humor. <laughs> that is total bullshit. I actually wrote uh, a staple. Like Everyone knows you don't staple a resume. You use a paper clip. Terrible form to put a staple in there. Won't eat your product. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Will, what's the actual answer? The actual answer is, I work at Pizza Hut, but thank you for assuming I've ever created a resume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Who gets the point? Um... If I'm going for pure accuracy, it's actually going to have to go with Josh's <laughs> because the most bullshit I've ever put on a job application is probably that I won't steal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that I won't eat your product is pretty close. Nice. <laughs> Good. Love it. Uh, and uh, last round, Ryan, you have a question for Annie? Um, I, I guess I do, but it's not really a good one. Um. I guess if you could choose to be any religion besides Christian, which would it be? We're back on this again. That's a weird qu- Okay. That's a weird question. I can go with the box. <laughs> 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 huh? I mean, I, I didn't outlaw it. Let's see. We're not doing that question? No. Does she have to pick a religion besides Christianity? Yeah, that was part of the All right. <laughs> you good with that? Sure. All right. Okay, all of the answers are in. Uh, Ryan? I have uh, Buddhism because everybody's on Team Nice. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's good. I actually uh, originally wrote atheism because of Jimmy's super compelling arguments, but then I crossed that out. (laughs) I crossed that out and I just wrote Jedi. Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, I think her answer will be, there are no other religions that matter. (laughs) (laughs) All right, good. Uh, I said said Judaism uh, for two reasons. Uh, Because Jesus was Jewish. Which is what my wife also just wrote. (laughs) (laughs) And the main reason, because uh, they're all already Judeo-Christian values anyway. (laughs) So that's just the natural extension. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. What do you got, Annie? I put, I I would be atheist, but my definition of atheism is believing in God and living a <laughs> Christian cray life. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, who gets the point? Team Nice always wins. Team Nice. Woo! <laughs> Even though that means that we're tied now, Ryan. So. Sweet. Uh-oh. All right. Dang yeah. it. Oh. That is. Yeah, it's a tie game. At the expense game. of my own niceness, possibly not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's nice super nice to, do, to tie, though. <laughs> team, <laughs> team Nice frequently ties. <laughs> should we? Yay. Should we? Uh, should we end in a tie? Or should we keep playing until someone wins? We can never end. Then it might never end. Well, until so, yeah, could be a. Th- we could turn this into a three-way tie. I think it's good well, as a could, tie. Oh, okay. That's or not. We it could be good as a tie, or we could do sudden death with Mary. Just me and Ryan oh. answer. Let's do sudden death. Let's ask Ooh. Mary a question. Uh, can you? Is your mic on? Hello. Hey. <laughs> uh, let's ask somebody. Ask Mary a question. She'll write her answer, and then just you two. Mm-hmm. So then, a, me and Ryan can't ask the question. Correct. Yeah. Uh, who's got a question for Mary? Uh, either one of you can ask. Can ask the question. That's fine. What's the trashiest book you've ever read? Is that a bad one? I know you like to read. Uh, yeah, I'm it, that already just... writing my answer. Come on. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Okay, so this is just between Annie and Ryan. You guys have your but answers ready? I can't win, but can I say my answer even though I'm <laughs> ineligible? Yes. Okay. I just want you to be real quick. I wrote this in all caps with several exclamation points. The Bible. Uh, back to that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, hey, there's some filth in that fucking book. That's true. Do you ever read that? There's I some haven't read the whole abhorrent thing. Abhorrent sexuality, <laughs> violence, people turn into salt. It gets real weird. <laughs> Annie, what do you got? <laughs> I put the part of my book I'm writing that I decided to just save for the bonus edition. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Ryan? Nice. Uh, mine is uh, Jimmy's podcast fan fiction, which is a version of Annie, <laughs> where Mary is the love interest and Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> What's your actual answer, Mary? Coo Shields Dart by Jacqueline Carey. Uh, a real, a book. real book. <laughs> <laughs> well, who gets the point? a lot of sex in that book. Um, the nice lady for bringing up my book. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Annie wins Yay, the note Annie. card game. <laughs> Hooray! All right, let's... Uh, this is going to do it for uh, part one of the Jimmy Curve podcast featuring Annie Hildebrand. Let's wrap it up here. We will come back next week with uh, more Annie Hildebrand and Ryan Dowd. And uh, we're going to do some <laughs> trivia. <laughs> Why did you just make a face at me? <laughs> I didn't think you'd say it. We're on a <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody, for more Annie Hildebrand. Oh, Ryan Down. Uh, Will Doherty. What, are we making noises? Joshua Vosler. Carbs are the enemy. And <laughs> some Mary Putnam. Hi. Uh, join us next week. Thank you and good night. <laughs>